Welcome to the special Food Forest series. It's part of the Celebrate Waste at the Sand Garden videos. The series is made possible through the work of Malaya Groom and Jordan Hosea, who have the terrific organization Incredible Edibles. Topic in this film is spiral gardens. There's a lot of advantages I think you'll see, and they're quite beautiful. You just might want to build one after watching this video. Hey, Jordan, what are you doing today? Sculpting a spiral, garden bed. Which actually gives us 15% more growable space than a regular rectilinear flat monocrop, monoculture, garden bed. So you have one row that's just continuously turned up on itself. And uh, creates conditions for microclimates to happen. You have a high spot, a low spot, shady spot, wet spot, dry spot. And why is that? Just the different orientations with respect to the sun? Or? Yeah, as well as height. Yeah. Height, like there will be a, a wall about this high here that will be real warm and nice during the summer. So there'll be some plants that really like warm, dry, sunny faces, medicinal herbs. Well, even in the winter, that'll get also a really nice westerly sun. Exactly. Heating. But then in here, this will all be pretty low, but this wall will be high in here. This side will be low, so there will actually be shaded spot back in here. So it'll be like a northeast facing face over here. And there will be a mound that way. And then there will be a mound in the top of the spiral, you know, about this high. So that alone creates its own microclimate. Like if you think about a, a parabola or a concave hemisphere, and you take that, um, it's obviously going to give you more growing space or surface area if you have the same space as whatever you're covering that bed, whatever's there. Uh, you have actually, and you pull it out and flatten it out, it actually it increases your growable space by 15 percent. Forget what that's called when you have a ratio like that, but a good idea. <laughs> it's a yeah. It's just <laughs> the best way to be most efficient with your uh, zone one, zone two garden beds. Well, it's especially important, seems to me, to have it compact like that when it's right on top of the outdoor kitchen. Yeah. Uh, so in that small space, you can raise a wide diversity, I guess, of herbs and plants. You'll have over, you'll have over close to probably 30, 40 plants planted in this one spot right here. So that one probably five by five little spot. That cool or what? Well, we'll go ahead and let Jordan continue to dig while I rest my back. Well, this next clip was taken, oh, three days later. And it shows the infrastructure for the spiral gardens. And shows how they're comprised of broken cement, urbanite, and organic mushroom compost, like gold. Why is it all spiral? Is that just beauty? Well, it's not just beauty, but it's... So you can sit on the top and pick from the apple tree or pick from the herbs that are here or sit and have a cup of coffee while your mate is cooking a meal or in the kitchen. It's also for, uh, it's dimension, three, three dimensional uses. It'll actually create 15% more growable space because wow. you'll have a high spot and a low spot, a dry spot and a wet spot a shady spot and a sunny spot. So you have these microclimates where we can plant up to 30, 40 plants in this one spiral itself, along with the fruit tree. This is the real article now. The real 
We get our 50% increase in space exactly. here. Exactly, exactly. And about probably seeding about five. Again, carrying about 30 to 40 plants, all edible or usable, medicinal in some way. <coughs> All chunks of concrete cycled. What's increasingly being called urbanite. Urbanite. Well, believe it or not, this is that spiral garden three weeks after the last film clip. Furthermore, I've been juicing leafy vegetables and making salads out here for at least a week. You might want to try and make one yourself. Thanks for watching.